Welcome to the Video Dictionary, where we explore the meanings, histories, and etymologies of the words we use every day. Today's word is one you might not think fits in a dictionary of the English language, but I have heard English speakers use the word in a context separated from the obvious, and I myself have used the word. This word is a borrowing from another language. English does that a lot. It borrows a lot of words. And it's not just any language. It's an invented language. And I'm not so much going to talk about the word itself in today's video as the language itself that is borrowed from. And that language is Klingon. Anyway, let's get started. Kapla. Interjection. Good luck or a wish for a successful venture. Noun. Success. Primarily in Klingon. I've always been a really big fan of Star Trek, and I find myself a lot re-watching Deep Space Nine. I think I'm on about my fourth playthrough of the series. And years ago I even attempted to learn Klingon. But I didn't get much further than Nuknech and Nuktach Oh Puchpa Eh. Those are basically the phrases for hello and where's the bathroom. With the return of Star Trek to the small screen, with Star Trek Discovery, I thought it might be fun to discuss the word Kapla by itself doesn't have a very interesting origin within the Klingon language. But I think the story behind the language itself, at least if you're a Star Trek fan, is pretty interesting. The story begins with Scotty, the engineer of the original Enterprise, or James Doohan, as the actor is called, who created the sounds that the actor spoke at the beginning of Star Trek The Motion Picture. Here's a clip. At the time, James Doohan didn't create any grammar or even words with particular definitions. He only created the sounds the actors were making so they would sound alien, and they simply added subtitles in post-production to let the audience know what was being said. When Star Trek II The Wrath of Khan came around, the production team put themselves in an even tighter predicament. They decided, after they had already recorded some scenes, that they wanted Spock and Savik to speak Vulcan to each other. That required some special skills related to linguistics. That's where Mark Ockrand came in. At the time, Mark was working on closed captioning for networks and television stations. But with his experience in linguistics, he was perfect for the job. He was able to create sounds that matched the mouth movements of Leonard Nimoy and Kirstie Alley. And then they had them record those sounds in additional dialogue recording after production was done. And those voices were put in over the originally filmed material. Here's a clip from that sequence. And in the third Star Trek film, The Search for Spock, there was a whole new opportunity for Leonard Nimoy, the director, and the rest of the Star Trek production team to expand the universe even further, and they brought Mark Ockrand back for the challenge of creating a new language. This time with vocabulary and grammar. To begin this massive project, he returned to the original work of James Doohan in the first film. He took the sounds that James Doohan had created and separated them into words with definitions and put them together with grammar so that it matched the subtitles on the screen and would be consistent within the new film. The sounds and the words in this scene gave him a starting point create the Klingon language. And in one of the special features on the Star Trek 3 DVD, Mark describes how the language he created began to grow and change like an actual real language by people speaking it and making mistakes. Here's a clip from that featurette. <laughs> Leonard yells cut, that was a great take. Christopher Lloyd says, I blew it. And he says, what do you mean? He says, I said the Klingon wrong. And he did. He left off the wa, and he left off the vite. Leonard Nimoy says, Mark, 
how did the Klingon sound to you? And I knew that the correct answer is, it sounded fine. And in fact, it did sound fine. It sounded like perfectly good Klingon. Grammatically, it wasn't what I had in mind, but it sounded fine. So what I did in order to make it work is just on the spot, change the grammar a little bit. And the, way, the main change I made was with this prefix, ye. Originally, ye meant this is an imperative, this is a command. But now, you only use the ye prefix if you're giving a command and the object is singular. So, yechoch has to mean kill one. Because you use a different prefix, which I hadn't made up yet, if you mean kill more than one. So you don't need the wa, that's superfluous, that's extra. So suddenly, what Christopher Lloyd said is grammatically just fine. So the grammar changed there. What occurred to me as I was doing all this with the sounds changing, with, with the grammar changing, is that language was, was growing. My language was growing and developing and changing at an incredibly rapid pace. It was like the Genesis planet was having an effect on the language itself. So it came in in one form, and by the time it went through this whole Genesis planet thing, it came out a little differently. It did the same thing that real languages do. It did it a lot faster, but real languages grow and change as a result of speaking it, and so did Klingon. And this finally brings me to the word for today's video, kapla. When the Klingon language was originally envisioned, it only had one greeting, and that greeting was Nuknech. This greeting was a very terse, and to most Terran sensibilities, rude. What it really meant was, what do you want? But after I tried learning Klingon and heard that this was supposed to be the greeting in Klingon, I don't think I ever remember hearing it in the TV series Maybe once? Anytime I saw Klingons greeting each other, they were always using the word kapla, which means success. And I think that's because in the series, most of the time the Klingons are interacting with each other. It's in a very formal, very honorable sense. And what do you want? I don't think just doesn't fit in that kind of situation, even for a race as terse as Klingon. So Kapla shifted its meaning from just meaning success to also meaning good luck. And it even seems to have been borrowed into English. When I was looking up this word, I originally intended this video to be kind of a, a gag. I wanted to do it as the history of the Klingon word and actually make something up. But when I looked into the history of Klingon, I thought the story of the language itself was interesting enough to make its own episode out of. And when I went to Wiktionary, the Wikipedia version of the dictionary, they even included kapla as an English word and has its origin as a borrowing from the Klingon language. Klingon isn't the first invented language to leave its mark on English. Tolkien's Quinya and Sindarin and even Esperanto to name a few have left a mark, even beyond the subcultures that surround them. The English language loves to borrow new words from other cultures and other languages, and isn't afraid to learn new things and explore. And that's one of the things I love most about the English language. Thank you for watching and indulging my Star Trek fascination. But if you did enjoy this exploration of the word kapla, leave a like and subscribe for more explorations of the words we use every day. If you'd like more information about this video and links to sources, please follow the link in the description below to the blog page regarding this video. And if you'd like to support the Video Dictionary Project, there's also a link to where you can do that. Thank you for watching, and until next time, keep on learning.